In all the universe, there is perhaps no object quite so preposterous as the neutron star. On the one hand, it's a corpse left behind by a star that once lived through its own glory days, a cool, inert husk that's nearly unrecognizable from its former brilliance. On the other, it is a super, super, super heavy celestial body, so incredibly massive that a few cubic centimeters of the stuff would weigh upwards of a billion metric tons. Many elements of how they work and what goes on around them remain unknown, but it is what we do know about the neutron star, these elusive zombie-like undeads of the celestial worlds, that we're going to be exploring today. Now, when we discuss the properties of a neutron star, it's easy to sort of zone out a little bit and miss the characteristics that do make it quite so special. Generally, a neutron star has somewhere between 1.1 times the mass of our star on the lower limit or 2.35 times the mass of our star on the upper limit. Most that we've identified are below two times the sun's mass, and the smaller ones are roughly the same size as a white dwarf star. Neutron stars shine bright enough that some have been spotted from Earth, although Although most of the electromagnetic waves they emit are on the X-ray spectrum, and they're not particularly hot for most of their lifespan, some million or so Kelvin. It's way hotter than the surface of our sun, but way cooler than its core. Pretty low key. But buckle up, because we're not done. When we say a neutron star is at least 1.1 times the mass of our star, we're leaving out a little detail. Well, all of that mass is crammed together into an incredible density, into a star that's only about 11 to 15 miles, that's 18 to 24 kilometers in diameter. That is some unheard of size, to the point where most cities on Earth could fit several such stars into their municipality. Of course, Doing that would also tear apart the entire Earth, force the neutron stars to collide with each other and form a black hole that would swallow everything we've ever known and loved, but... Well, that's a little bit beside the point, isn't it? Just one teaspoon's worth of a neutron star weighs about a billion tons, and a single grain of sand's worth would outweigh the Eiffel Tower so badly that if that grain of sand and the Eiffel Tower were placed on opposite ends of a scale, the Eiffel Tower would be launched clear to Belgium. And then there's a neutron star's magnetic field, which is not only stronger than the field of any other object in the known universe, but stronger by multiple orders of magnitude. In 2020, astronomers measured a neutron star with the catchy name GRO J1008-57 had a magnetic strength of about a billion Tesla units. And just for reference here, the magnetic field of Earth is about one twenty thousandth of a single Tesla. The most magnetic among all neutron stars are known as magnetars, with a force inside them that's so great that it can cause photons to combine into two or split apart, and the tendency to violently shake in the form of starquakes. Those starquakes may also cause a neutron star to glitch, that is, to spin faster than it was previously spinning while giving off unexpected bursts of gamma rays. However, the ultimate cause of these neutron star glitches is still undetermined. After the neutron star's incredible magnetism, we've got to consider the extreme brightness of its light. As we said before, neutron stars have been observed visually from Earth and recorded just like any other star. But now, instead of having a star's worth of light emitting from the size of something, well, the size of a normal star, it's squeezed down to a maximum 15 mile radius that we discussed before. For their size, neutron stars shine incredibly bright, and if they kept that same intensity at the size of a regular star, they'd be among the most visible objects in the night sky. Not only that, but light from other sources warps and bends around them because of their gravity, and so does time, which passes significantly more slowly on a neutron star than it would on Earth. Now, if all of that wasn't weird enough, we've also got to discuss what happens on the inside of a neutron star, a phenomenon referred to as nuclear pasta. With such a densely packed object, it shouldn't be much of a surprise that there is an incredible amount of pressure exerted inside a neutron star, and this causes matter to behave in a few strange ways. But even though the precise arrangement of matter inside a neutron star will vary from case to case, or even from region to region inside the star, all the options happen to look like pasta. In some cases, atoms inside a neutron star will arrange themselves in lasagna-like layers. Other times, they'll spiral like fusily. Other times, they'll form into clumps. They bear an uncanny resemblance to Nochi. 
For stars, outer crust is believed to be quite rigid, and in many ways, since it's a collection of nearly pure neutrons and very little else, it has functional similarities to a really big version of an atomic nucleus, although it's gravity, not nuclear force, that holds a neutron star together. And lastly, there's the neutron star's spin, which transforms some neutron stars from being just your garden variety, insanely dense cosmic neighbor into a pulsar. Unlike non-rotating neutron stars, pulsars blast out pulses of radiation along their magnetic poles, basically two continuous beams of light that spin like a rotating searchlight would here on Earth. In some cases, a pulsar might spin once every couple of seconds. In other cases, they'll spin once every couple of milliseconds. So precise, so exact is the speed of their rotation that they're considered to be the universe's most accurate natural clocks. From a static vantage point, like Earth's, that gives a pulsar the appearance of turning on and off in the night sky repeatedly, even though the light they emit is constant in reality. As for why some neutron stars spin while others don't, we don't know for sure, but it's possible that pulsars are the remaining half of a binary star system where whichever star reaches a neutron state first eats away at its stellar companion, and as that matter from its companion swirls around the neutron star, it begins to receive some momentum. By the time the companion star is eaten away, the neutron star is already spinning like a top. And so, the birth of a neutron star is among one of the most violent origin stories in all of the galaxy. And it's courtesy of a cataclysmic event that only a relatively small proportion of stars will ever experience. A supernova. Only possible in stars above around eight times the size of the sun, a supernova occurs at the end of a large star's natural lifespan, when the fuel sustaining the nuclear fusion reaction at its core finally dries up. Once their reaction ends, the star's core is saturated with superheated iron and other relatively heavy elements, which make the core prone to collapsing in on itself. For a time, the core can avoid this collapse by relying on something called degeneracy pressure, where the kinetic energy of electrons create their own sort of outward pressure to prop the core up on itself. But eventually, even though the core has ceased burning, the continued plasma burn happening elsewhere in the star will add more and more burned up matter to the core's overall mass. Eventually, this mass grows to a critical point where the core has no choice but to collapse in on itself at incredibly high temperatures, leading to some strange tricks of physics that are rarely seen anywhere else in the known universe. At this stage in a star's collapse, temperatures are so ridiculous that positively charged protons and negatively charged electrons are forced to combine into neutrons, subatomic particles with a neutral charge. This process releases another particle called a neutrino in some seriously massive quantities, and it's this flood of neutrinos that blasts the star's outer layers away from the core at incredible velocities. This explosion is the supernova, and remnants of the star's core left behind, now made up entirely of neutrons, become an aptly named neutron star. What happens next is mostly a question of mass. In the case of a really big star with a really big neutron star left behind, the force of gravity at and around its center will be so great that it collapses in on itself and becomes a black hole. But in a special Goldilocks range, a star that's big enough to go supernova, but not big enough to form a black hole, will leave its neutron star behind. Once the process is done, the neutron star is all that remains of its former host, as the rest of its matter is sent careening out into the void. The husk that's left behind might have a solid surface, if it's at a temperature under a million degrees Kelvin, or it might be liquid if it's above that threshold. But either way, it has basically no perceptible atmosphere. The separation between a neutron star's surface and the empty void of space is as small as just a couple of micrometers, and the star itself will be incredibly smooth because of the sheer force of gravity pulling inward from all sides. After the nuclear pastor that we discussed earlier, there's no real consensus on what lies in and around a neutron star's true center and it's entirely possible that the matter there could enter states that we don't even fully understand. But all the way through, the neutron star is believed to be at least 95% neutrons, a state that can only be achieved by fusing truly massive numbers of protons and electrons until they just become unrecognizable. As of right now, scientists have picked up on the presence of about 2,000 neutron stars in the Milky Way, but that number vastly undersells the true legion of neutron stars that we're pretty sure exist beyond our sight. According to the best estimates, there may be around a billion such stars scattered throughout the Milky Way. 
Milky Way, mostly hidden from sight. There are a few reasons for that. Most neutron stars are really old, and they're created relatively infrequently, with supernovas happening in our galaxy only every 50 years or so. Those that still do spin very quickly usually don't emit much visible light, instead emitting electromagnetic waves in other spectra, and as they age, all neutron stars will slow down and dim out. For a type of star that can be tough to spot just a couple of years into its lifespan, that's an extra layer of difficulty that's hard to overcome. Of the neutron stars that we do know about, a small proportion are locked into binary systems, sometimes paired with a fellow neutron star, sometimes paired with the so-called main sequence star like our Sun, and hypothetically also with black holes. In each case, it takes a fine balance in order to keep a neutron binary system binary. The neutron star might eat its next door neighbor or collide with it, or be eaten itself if it strays too close to a black hole. As such, a majority of the binary systems that exist today probably aren't going to exist for very long. And as odd as it is, neutron stars can still host planets of their own. In fact, the very first exoplanet humans ever found is spinning around a neutron star, and in fact, it's spinning around a pulsar, oh, which we've got to imagine makes for some truly freaky light shows in the planetary sky. In that particular solar system, the neutron star's planets receive a massive dose of radiation every 6.22 milliseconds seconds, coming to a total of about 161 individual blasts per second. In other neutron star solar systems, planets might have withstood the supernova that created their new host star, Robin, captured by the extreme gravitational pull in the area, or perhaps even formed out of the remnants of the solar system's former star after it went supernova. Unfortunately, the insane amounts of radiation on such worlds tend to be prohibitive for any form of life that we could conceive of. But. This is astrophysics, and by now we're pretty used to being surprised. And lastly, we've got to talk about the thing that happens when two neutron stars collide. Not just a supernova, but a kilonova. By now, we've already emphasized just how strong the gravitational forces inside an individual neutron star are, as well as the magnetism they exert on their surroundings. But now imagine two incredibly dense celestial bodies right next to each other, both exerting incredible gravity upon each other. We're not even going to attempt to find a metaphor that could represent that much force coming together, but suffice to say that the collision will happen with incredible power and incredible speed before the gravitational forces at play cause debris to coalesce around a new gravitational center. In a kilonova, the two neutron stars in question release more energy than the Sun will ever produce across 10 billion years of existence, and the byproducts of the explosion, heavy elements including gold and platinum, are blasted outwards, while within less than two seconds, the explosion concludes completely. Most of the time, the combination of two neutron stars' worth of mass is enough to produce a black hole, while in rare, theoretically feasible cases, two unusually small neutron stars will combine to form a really big one. Shocking as it may be to imagine, we've actually seen a kilonova here on Earth, a five and a half billion year old explosion that taught scientists much of what we know about neutron stars. This particular explosion is believed to have formed a heavy magnetar, the radiation from which should begin showing up in detectable amounts on Earth within just a couple of years. For a cosmic phenomenon that's so hard to spot, it perhaps shouldn't be a surprise that the list of famous neutron stars is pretty short. On that list is the so-called Black Widow Pulsar, located about 6,500 light years from Earth. It earned its name on account of its stellar companion, believed to be either a brown dwarf star or a super Jupiter gas giant exoplanet which it's slowly devouring. When it was discovered back in 1988, it was the only such star known to humanity. Then there's PSR B1509-58, which was featured in the so-called Hand of God photograph shot by the Chandra X-ray Observatory and RxJ1856.5-3754. <laughs> Catchy names all over the place today. The closest known neutron star to Earth at a distance of just 400 light years or so. And finally, there's Swift J181.0-1607, the youngest magnetar that we've discovered so far at the ripe old age of somewhere between 240 and 500 years, making it hardly a day old infant on a galactic scale. As for what all these neutron stars mean for people here on Earth, their value is just about entirely scientific, but the extreme forces at play inside them make for an opportunity to observe phenomena that we might otherwise never see. 
Take an incident that was spotted in August of 2017 when two neutron stars collided and produced a gravitational wave so substantial that it could be detected here on Earth. Located about 160 million light years away, the incident was the first time humans have ever detected gravitational waves, finally confirming a prediction made by Albert Einstein over 100 years prior. Those waves are powerful enough to warp space-time itself and are a critical confirmation of the idea that at least some parts of the universe work the way that we think they do. During the observation of that explosion, which lasted about 50 seconds, scientists reported that the release of energy was great enough that it outshone the entirety of the Milky Way about a billion times over, second only to the energy involved when two black holes collide. By analyzing the spectrum of light produced by the explosion, astrophysicists deduced that gold, platinum, lead, and other heavy elements are likely now spinning around the neutron star in a massive debris field, confirming that these sorts of explosions are the likely source of such elements in the universe. So just think about that the next time you see some gold jewelry. Now, it's highly unlikely that we'll be able to visit a neutron star in the next several hundred years of human development, and even if we could get a spacecraft close without having it ripped apart and absorbed into the star, there's quite a few better places to visit that don't involve getting completely washed in enough radiation to kill humanity a dozen times over. When it comes to cosmic fascinations of the universe, including the ones that live right on our doorstep, there are few if any, more captivating than the neutron star, perhaps the strangest, most unknowably marvelous thing in the whole universe.